<laughs> I know, it's messy. I know, I know I'm trying to do my hair so I don't look disgusting. So this first video that I am introducing to my channel as a new fresh start is going to be about creating art with tea or coffee if you don't have tea. This whole challenge is centered around it being easy, accessible and putting you in a good mindset of when you're drawing, almost like evoking the old like childlike self. You know, when you were a kid, you used to approach drawing with not much of a care in the world. You would just draw whatever you were drawn. You would draw, you would draw whatever you were drawn to. Puns. But nowadays, you know, going through being a professional artist and working in industry, I, the, I find because I do what I do for work is also what I do for joy. This, the two get muddled up way too easily and it ends up being what I would usually do for joy becomes stressful. So I'm trying to retrain my brain into seeing art as almost like a therapeutic expression. And this is gonna be a journey for anyone involved in this, trying to figure out what I can do to help myself. And hopefully I'll help some others along the way. And hey, even if you're not an artist, anybody, absolutely anyone can give this a go because it's fun and therapeutic and it doesn't take many tools. And I've specifically designed this to work with things that you'd have about the house. So you don't need any fancy art supplies because I believe talent in art, well not talent in art, art knowledge comes from hard work and practice. It doesn't come from the tools you use because an incredible artist can do wonderful things with the cheapest pencil in the world. It just depends on your skill level. But, you know, you've got to start somewhere. So let's take a look at some stuff we've got lying around the house and make some art out of it. So here we go. So I am also in my kitchen because my art studio is not properly set up. Yes, I'm on my knees. <laughs> Begging with you, please. Now, what you're gonna need, some paper. Now it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I am using this sketchbook cost me a couple of pounds. It was just, it's not the, the most expensive paper. It's literally just, plain, relatively thin sketching paper. It's not a big deal, doesn't cost very much money, don't have to use fancy paper. Use lined paper, anything you have, printer paper, whatever. Just use it because we aren't trying to make incredible pieces of art, we're just trying to practice and have fun. You're going to need some pens or pencils. Um, you can use a variety if you only have one. Look, I've got a cheap ass regular pencil. This is fine. There is uh, a thicker 6B pencil, which is a little bit more fancy, but this is also fine. I have a standard ass ballpoint pen. This is fine. I have slightly more fancy pens. These are fine. We're pen and pencil inclusive here. If you only have crayons, use a crayon. It don't matter, okay? So the whole point of this is that we're gonna be using tea to make something that looks like. Drum roll please, this is one I made earlier. It's gonna end up looking something like this, or this. So we're gonna be making splotches. Now obviously to get this kind of coloring, this kind of sepia color, we're gonna need to use either some tea or some coffee. So right here I have some instant coffee. I have some standard English breakfast tea here because you know what, I'm British. So of course I'm gonna have boring ass tea. And this is the tea bag. This project is might get a little bit wet. So if you're not on a surface that you can clean up after yourself or that might get stained, get yourself a tray to put it on so that you don't make a mess. I always make a mess and I'm fine with that, but clean up your mess. All right, let me show you what to do. And as a little teaser, this is the kind of thing that we're gonna be working with later on. I don't wanna go into this too much detail now, I'll show you later. I will actually draw some stuff live so you can see what I mean. Anyway, let's get down to it. Howdy folks. So, what you're gonna need to do is get yourself two containers that are heat resistant. Uh, you can use mugs, obviously, that is the logical choice, but in this situation, I'm using some clear glass little containers because you can see what I'm doing. So, I'm gonna just put a little bit of coffee in one of them. And this coffee is old AF, so like I don't need to worry about wasting that bad boy. Uh, we're gonna be putting the tea bag in the next one. You're gonna need to boil some water, so however you wanna do that, pouring a little bit of water on this, and I'm gonna be pouring a little bit of water on the coffee. Just let that 
through a bit. Now obviously it's easier to do this with the tea bag because you can um, squeeze it and move it around. So I'm gonna just let that brew, I'm gonna stir the coffee a bit. What I'd recommend maybe for the coffee is if you don't wanna just splatter it with your fingers. Um, obviously the stronger you make the coffee, the, oh, I've already splattered a bit. The stronger you make the coffee, the darker it's gonna come up. So it's fun to experiment with different strengths of things. So you're basically gonna let these cool down and come back to it in about five minutes. So hello again, I hope you've been sensible and left it long enough to cool down so it won't burn your fingers off. That's what sensible people will do, but uh, am I sensible? That is questionable. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna fish, in the tea bag situation, you're gonna fish the tea bag out and you can use this, you can always make a cup of tea out of it rather than waste the tea bag. But basically you're gonna squeeze like the excess fluid out and then what you're gonna do, you're gonna sort of position it over your piece of paper and you're gonna just dribble a bit around. Oh, hi Kepler. Hi, you're not supposed to be up here, are you? Can you get down? Get down. Yeah, you better. There are two ways you can do this. You could splatter it everywhere. Oop. <laughs> you can splatter it everywhere or you can do like isolated blotches. Play around with whatever you want. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a squeeze. That was a lot of liquid. So if you've got like an excess amount like that, you can see the amount of water, you can just kind of tap it around with your finger. Obviously, this is where the important part comes in of making sure that it's cool enough to work with. <laughs> I'm gonna, since this is an okay temperature now, I'm gonna just do a little, little dribble up here. And obviously when the tea bag's drier, what you can do is just dab it. I am an embarrassment. Which is the nice thing about the tea bag because you have a little bit more control over where you want it to go. Now the paper, obviously this is cheaper paper, it doesn't matter because it's just an art experiment. It's gonna kind of fold and crumple because of the water content on the paper. And that's normal. If you really like your art piece afterwards, you can iron it, like you can get the creases out, so don't worry. Okay, so that's that one. I'm not gonna hold it up because the water is, the tea water is gonna go everywhere. We'll move on to the coffee next. But when the tea dries, it should look something something like this, like you've got a little bit of variant in color and this can help you create things and we'll get onto that in a sweet sec. Alrighty, onto the coffee my dudes. So you can use a teaspoon like, like I was earlier, you can scoop a tiny bit out. If you don't have tea, just use anything that will make a sort of colored mark on the paper. This is in the way. So I'm just dribbling some coffee here. You can splatter it, you can do what you want. And then you can always come back in with your finger, you don't need anything fancy, and just sort of dab it around. Oh my god, that is so 20... When when did even dab, dabbing start? Uh, when did even dabbing start? Wow. Rummaging around here, and I'm gonna plop some on. Let's do a big splatter so I can show you what that might look like. So I'm just gonna go, what? And you can leave that drawing to leave like a splatter print or you can work, work it in. And you can cover the entire thing. Obviously, like you can see on this side, it's much more populated with the, the coffee stains, um, whereas this side is more isolated. So like I said, just play around with it. Like Bob Ross says, we're all friends here. I don't know if he ever said that. Um, <laughs> we're all here to have a good time with art and not stress about it. So I'm gonna put this coffee one aside and I'm gonna show you now how you can create sick artwork out of this. Might not be sick, it might be perfectly healthy. Who knows, let's find out. So what we're basically gonna be draw doing, dr dr I wanted to say drawing and doing at the same time. What we're gonna be doing is just looking for any patterns in, in the, the difference in shapes that are formed. So I guess let's begin. So you can approach this from a character perspective, you can approach it from a landscape or a building perspective, or just patterns. Like if you don't feel comfortable drawing drawing um, characters, just start to follow some curves and make some sort of pattern out of this. And you may find that as you start drawing that more more shapes begin to unfold and you start to see like, oh, this could be um, a shell or it could be some sort of device. So for me, my immediate um, view of this is that it looks kind of like a, a wormy caterpillary snake, but it looks like these are, this could be like teeth. 
and this is the mouth coming down here and then more jagged teeth and then it's got a big tongue and I can color that in black later maybe it's got a throat and a uvula there um, I'm gonna put its eye up here and it looks pretty weird and you don't have to like do um, all of the outlines you can just fill in in places where you feel like it's necessary to put detail in so for me this body is kind of like a big glowworm kind of it's got like sections or um, segments like a like a caterpillar would so I'm gonna give it some details on its lips here I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shadow like underneath here and then it's like a kind of buggy caterpillary snake thing and that's like where my mind I'm gonna give it some tiny wings as well because these look like they could be like tiny like that cat the, the fat caterpillar in bugs life I don't remember his name he had a German accent though maybe it has like tiny wings like that and I'm just gonna add some some lines suggest some some texture I'm gonna fill this out a little bit so that you know it's the inside of the mouth and it you know it's not neat it's not pretty but it's we're just having fun dun 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 I'll do this one in pencil so proving that you don't have to use a pen now to me my <laughs> my immediate mind men went to and because I have aphantasia this is a really good practice for me because my whole brain is relying on using the shapes here and using data in my head to assign a character to it rather than trying to plan it out in my head. So for me, this almost seems like there's some sort of Roman soldier um, that is like smoking or vaping. Um, so like this bit looks like, you know, those headpieces they wore on chariots. Oh wait, it's like this, isn't it? It's like a kind of Spartan kind of. That is not Roman. Spartan is not Roman, but maybe it looks like he's letting out a big vape cloud. But it looks like he's either driving a submarine or a boat of some sort. So um, he's got his hands here, like on the wheel. Um, his armor comes down here. And then this could be some sort of ship. And it looks like it's got like a big flying propeller on the end of it you know like a steampunk kind of ship you can see like how excited i'm getting like when i'm drawing these kinds of things because to me this is such uh, a wonderful way to be creative without stress and i experience so much stress drawing and i know i shouldn't but i hold myself to such high standards that a lot of the time i just don't draw for fun because i feel like it's too stressful Maybe that's some sort of like ruddery apparatus. So that's kind of cool. Now, this is one I played around with. My patrons have seen me start this one and my patrons have, have very graciously done a bit of an art challenge with me. So if you want to get involved with art challenges in future, join up with my Patreon because these guys have done some really cool art. So this is the design that Bakati sent me. He's one of my Patreons. What's cool is to see the extent of which there's like, you know, very obvious kind of, this is very obviously a snowman. This is a skull and crossbones, upside down dude, <laughs> totally cool. And then some other things I feel like are like kind of up for interpretation. Um, Bafti, you can tell me if I'm completely wrong. But this is the cool thing about art like this is that like some things can be down for interpretation. Like to me, this looks like either a salt and pepper shaker, but it's got like fly wings. I'm pretty sure that's not what it is, but how cool would that be to have like an insect blend of everyday items like a salt and pepper shaker? This could be like a mountain and some sea and some, like this could be a tree on a, a bunch of ground. Uh, this is really cool. It looks like it could be something climbing a cliff or if you turn it up this way, it's like jagged cliffs and a stormy sea with some clouds and rain. And then there's a sleeping dude here. It's all just like really cool stuff. And I'm just so glad that you got involved with this. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. This is DL Pictures, another one of my patrons. This is his interpretation of it. And again, like completely different style stuff. 
really cool. Um, like we've got some eyes over here, we've got some creatures, we've got a dog, a dude, um, some faces. It's really cool to see what other creators have have seen in their splotches. Now, obviously he's gone with a more like overall splatter. So what happens if you do a big splatter is that a load of stuff gets intermingled, but how cool is it? Cause like maybe if you were drawing, you maybe wouldn't have sat down and like done this kind of artwork, but having some splatters puts you in a position where you can start to see different shapes and draw weird stuff. Like look at this dude. It looks like a little monster guy. I love it. Really cool work, man. Uh, thank you so much for, for submitting this, and um, I'm so, so proud to be able to show it. Thank you. My partner, Tom, I gave him a sheet to doodle on. Well, he, actually, he stole a sheet and started doodling on it, and then I was like, well, you may as well finish it, but he did three. So he had a sort of, like, ninja person with a rat, like, um, headpiece. It's like these shapes give you a helping hand, a little boost in creativity when you're when you can't think of what else to do. This one kind of looks like a man with a beard and this is his mouth. Maybe he's drooling and crying. Uh, he's got a tiny hat on. I'll have to ask Tom later about what it actually is. It could be something else completely, but that's what I see. And then this is some sort of bull creature with like a, a backpack on or something and it looks like he's running. Um, I just think it's really creative. It's just a really cool, it's a really cool drawing. So yeah, that's what I've got so far with with these doodles. And I would love it if you would give it a go. Letting your brain take you where it wants to go. It's like meditating to me because it's allowing me to be creative without the judgment and ego from my brain telling me this isn't good enough or this should be better, this should be look a certain way. It's complete freedom. You can tag me on Instagram or send me pictures on Twitter at Amy Right Meow. This is obviously my second channel, this is my art channel, um, but everything tends to go through Amy Right Meow. If you would like to support me, I have a Patreon, Amy Right Meow, link in the description. Get involved like my other Patreons who um, created some really cool art pieces. I'm really proud of them that they got involved. And there'll be plenty of opportunity for the upper tier Patreons to take part in all of my art challenges and tutorials in future. Uh, but also I have some merch out now and I'm gonna be releasing some new ones soon. But for now, I have my Trippy Kitty tea and Aphantasia tea at amyrightmeow.tmail.com. I hope this sparks many more videos coming out of this channel. So I'm gonna say toodle pip for now, as the British say, it's not what the British say. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go, bye bye